Welcome back and welcome to level seven of this project. Last level, we added error handling to make our server and our API more robust and more resilient towards errors coming in from the user. Today, we're going to expand that even more with this level seven, because we're doing, going to be checking the input that the user sends using something called SART. And SART is a very nice package or library that you can use to make schema validation. And we're going to do, we're going to use that in order to validate the input that is coming from the user. Because currently the error handling that we have does not check if the input is valid before it tries to insert in the database. So this means that whatever we get from the user, we'll just try to put it in the database and if it blows up, then we handle it. But that is actually a vulnerable way to do it and we are missing one important thing and that is to check what it is that the user has sent us before we even uh, try to insert it into our database because just firing off um, SQL statements using random input from random users can be very, very dangerous. So that is why we would like to first validate the input before we even try to introduce it to the database. And that is how that is why we're going to use SART. So of course we can install SART using NPM. So let's do an NPM I dash dash save only two dashes like this and then uh, set OD. And this will then install SART and we can start using SART. And then the next thing that we have to do is to create a schema for our input. So in the source folder, I'm just going to create a file called a SART schema like this, schema.ts. And let's open up this file. And in here, I'll just paste my schema that I have already defined. <clears throat> So let's just go through it. This is a schema that looks a little bit like our Prisma schema. If we open up the Prisma schema file, you remember where we defined this book type and this model and this schema is used to define what our data looks like in the database. But be careful, there's a difference. This is the data that is present in the database, whereas the such schema will define the data and the style or the, the architecture of the data that is coming in from the user. So the, there's a very big difference. This is data coming from the user and the Prisma is data in the database. There's a difference. So in this schema or in this file, I have, I have defined two different schemas, one for creating a book and one for updating a book. And again, they look very similar, but that is just because this is the, the nature of the domain that we're working with or how I have defined that this project will work with these books and just to keep it very simple. And the way that you create this schema is by using the Z that you import from SART and then you do dot object because I want to specify that this is going to be an object and it will have these three keys just like before and the type of this key will be or the type of the value for the title will be a set string. And this is a function that you call. And this is how you use Zot, how you use it to define your schemas. And uh, of course, again, this is Zot syntax. And to learn more about Zot syntax, you have to go into the documentation and read more about it. This is just an introduction. But as, as always, I want you to expand upon your knowledge, expand your knowledge, go explore this further and look into the documentation so that you understand this even better. So that is the create book schema. The update book schema is the same, except for the fact, the fact that it is now allowed to be nullable. So just like before, we allowed our updates to be undefined. That means that the user does not have to specify or to provide all the values if they only want to update one or two of them. So this is why they can now all be nullable. And then now the next thing is that we can use these schemas in our uh, controller to make sure that the input we get from the request is actually valid. In order to use the start schema, we are going to use a parsing method that is on that, start, that uh, schema. But before we do that, I would just like to fold all of these, uh, all of these functions because this is only going to be relevant for the insert book and for the update function. So these two, I will expand and uh, have a look at them. So. Now we would like to try to, um, before we even try with this logic, we would like to make sure that the body of the request is 
valid in terms of our schema. So this means that I'm going to move out this uh, extraction of these properties from the body and I'll move them out and then instead of creating these variables, I will instead just create one book, I will call it, and then I'm going to grab the create book schema and I'll import it from the sub schema. And this schema then has a function on it that is called pass safe pass like this. And then we're going to safe pass the request.body. So this means that the this book here will be the result of trying to safely pass the body. And safe passing using the schema just means that SART is going to check the request.body and check if this uh, correctly matches uh, uh, the schema for the create book. So if it actually um, works, then we have a successful book. So we can do like this, we can do book.success and we can put this in an if statement. So if, if we have successfully created a book, then we will try to do all of this. And if we don't have a success else, then we're going to do a res.response. Then we will respond like this with an error code 400 and then with a message saying that um, the input was not valid. Of course, you could make the error handler, you could expand upon the error handler and make sure that the error handler could handle such a case. But for now, I'll just uh, keep it a little bit more simple and just do it directly here with the response. So now we don't need to create this anymore because on this book object that we get returned from the safe path, safe pass method, we actually have the data inside it. So we both have the success, but we also have a bit more than that. So right here where we insert the book, we can now instead get book dot data. And this data will now include the correct, um, the correct data in the correct form. And we can now delete this line above. So by doing this, by trying to safe pass this, we make sure that the input that we're getting from the client or from the user is actually in the format that we are expecting. So now that we know that this has been safely passed and we know that we have the right type, then we can safely go on to put it in, try and put it into our uh, database. And this is what we do with the Prisma. So that was for the uh, insert book. We'll do something very similar to the update, update book. So we'll do const update equals and then we'll do the update book schema and import it. And then we'll safe pass the request that body. And if this update was successful, if we could pass it correctly without an error, then we will try to follow our logic. And if not, then we are going to have an error. So if we don't have the success, then we're going to return with this status. And I actually think that, let me just check on this update, we actually have the error. So we could also uh, return this error that we have here, dot, uh, I think error dot message like this. This is how we could do it. Let's see. So we could also do it like this and actually return the, um, the message that is on that error. So that is actually more nice than just putting in this string. So let me just do that for this one as well, book.error.message. So then we will be returning the message to the user, telling them how they didn't uh, live up to the requirements of our schema. And then we also have to update our uh, Prisma service because now over here, if we take this Prisma service, not the schema, the Prisma service, now when we have this insert book function, instead of taking this as a input param uh, as the type, we would instead like to use our sort schema as the type. And the way that we can do that is by doing set from sort z dot infer. And then we can do like this. This is the type we want to infer type of, and then this will be the create book schema. So this means that we are trying to, because the create book schema is not a type in itself but we can infer the type. We can get the type and create a type from, uh, from it by using this syntax. The way we do this set, dot, uh, set infer, and then 
this is what we want to infer the type from. And then we create a type from the create book schema. And now we know that the book input parameter will be of this type. And of course we can do the same thing down here. Instead of having this update be this uh, object that we have specified here, we again do set.infer and then these small arrows and then we will do type of and then this will be the update book schema like this. And let's just check it out. Let's see if everything is working as expected. If we jump back to Postman and let's try to post a book that does not have the author, uh, sorry, the title. So we send this and now we get back this error from SART, which is a step before the error handler. So the error handler doesn't even kick in yet. We are now handling that beforehand by trying to pass the request that body using ZART, then because this doesn't work, because we're missing the title, then we get back this message saying that we expected a string, we got undefined and it was on this path, it was this uh, key or value that was missing, it was the title and the message is that this is actually required. You have to supply the title. So if we actually add the title and we send this, now everything should go through and we should be good to go. Yes, as you can see, we have now inserted one more book and it gets the ID too. So just to wrap it up, in our controller, we are now using this schema to make sure that the request body is actually valid and that it looks in exactly the way that we want it to. And in the sort schema, we define what our input should look like. And of course, these sort, sch sort schemas, you should always also use in your front end. So before your front end even sends anything to your back end, you should validate the input from the user in the front end using the same schemas. And if you would like to share these schemas between your two projects, if you have your uh, repository split, if you have your uh, front end code in one project and your back end code in another project, then you can put these schemas in an NPM package that you can then pull down into both projects. Or if you're going a monolith architecture where you have your whole uh, front end and back end in the same project, then of course you can only you can also just define this in one file and then import it from both. So there are two ways to go about that. But I really recommend that you also use these uh, schemas in your front end such that the flow will be the front end validates and sends it, then the back end validates. And that's because the back end should be uh, should not trust anything. So it wants to check everything that it receives, it has to check. So even though the front end should be validating the backend does not trust it. So it's going to do its own validation. And this is what we just did in here. And then we can continue on with the data flow in our project or in our code. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it fun and uh, that you learned something new. And then I'll see you in the next level. Happy coding.